Hi guys, it's Lindsay. Welcome back to The Wandering Reader. Today I thought I would take you with me to my local library. So um, I'm, I've driven into Colchester and I've never been to Colchester Library before. So yeah, I've never been into Colchester Library before. I want to sort of check it out, see if I can get some bits and pieces out of the library. Um, and then I will show you guys what I got at the end of the video. So I hope you enjoy this. It is snowing again today in the UK, so I can't believe it. It's like, what's the date today? I think it's like March the 17th and it is snowing again. So, um, yeah, this is like the weirdest weather, I think. The weirdest winter, I think, I've ever encountered. So, um, yeah, so we're going to... It's not heavily snowing or anything like that, but it's freezing cold outside. So we're going to go and check it out and I will report back. So I am back from the library and um, I have to say I was really impressed with the selection that was on offer. I don't really know, well I do know how I got the impression. I have not really used my local library since I moved to this sort of area which is about five years ago now. Um, and just because I like buying books so much and adding to my collection so yeah, I haven't really um, used the library much and I think um, using the online services you, so you can obviously um, request books on their website and then they get sent to your local library and I haven't always been able to find exactly the books that I want, they don't have them um, so my impression of the, the sort of library system on my area has been influenced by that I was like oh do they have like a really good selection of stuff and that sort of idea um, but also, um, the library that's right around the corner from me is a very, very small library. It's, yeah, so tiny. And I've been in there a few times to pick things up and not really been that impressed with the selection. But then it's a Diddy library, so yeah, it's not really going to have much of a selection. So I'm so glad I went to Colchester Library because I feel like I got a really good impression of exactly what the sort of Essex library system is like um, and I, yeah I was blown away by the selection they had a really good um, teen sort of YA section and then a really good modern section and then um, they had like different genres as well which I didn't really look too hard at those um, and then they had these um, sort of express shelves I put a shot in the vlog of them and um, they had some like new titles and different titles to kind of pique your interest in that sort of thing so um i haven't actually counted how many books i've got so i picked up 14 books um uh, one of which i was due to pick up anyway i'd ordered it um and i was just picking it up today the others i just kind of grabbed when i got home um stefan said to me how long have you got to read these books like you're going to take most of them back and I suppose that sort of is the case but I'm, I'm just like really excited about all of them so it doesn't matter I suppose that's the, that's the thing isn't it when you go to the library like you can just take things back and then I can get them back out again and yeah there's no sort of oh well I've paid eight pounds for it and now I've got to read it or something kind of along those lines. Anyway, so I'm going to stop rambling now and tell you about the books that I picked up in the library. Um, the first of those was Hotel on the Corner of Bitter and Sweet and this is by Jamie Ford. This was the one that I had ordered in um, and this is my booktuber recommends pick of the month. 
Um, so yeah, I, I ordered it a couple of weeks ago and I finally got a text message to say that it was in. So I believe this is some sort of a historical fiction novel set in Seattle, I think. Yeah, just yeah not so i'm not really sure um about much more than that but um carrie ann really likes this book and obviously she recommends it so i'm looking forward to reading that one and um, i'll definitely be reading this one i also saw a couple of caris bray's books and they've been on my wish list for a long time so this one is a song for izzy bradley and this cover is absolutely incredible there's a bit of a glare because all of these have got those horrible sort of plastic covers on them that libraries tend to do. I was actually um, really impressed by the amount of hardback books that I saw in there, uh, I suppose because they last a little bit longer um, and so if you if they get kind of bashed around in people's bags then it's they're, they're, they're going to survive I suppose. Um, so this one, I don't really know anything about this but I've had it on my wish list for a while. Um, so it says here, this is the story of what happens when Izzy Bradley dies. It's the story of Ian, husband, father, maths teacher, a Mormon bishop, and his unshakable belief that everything will turn out all right if he can only endure to the end like the pioneers did. It's the story of his wife Claire's lonely wait for a sign from God and her desperate need for life to pause while she comes to term with things. It's the story of agony and of the agony and hope of Zippy Bradley's first love, the story of Ol Ulmer Bradley's cynicism and reluctant bravery, and it's the story of seven-year-old Jacob. His faith is bigger than a mustard seed, probably bigger than a toffee bonbon, and he's planning to use it to mend his broken family with a miracle. So it sounds like it's going to be obviously focused around a family and we're going to get to read from different perspectives. Um, I've never read anything by Caris Bray before, um, and I saw this and another one which I'll show you in a bit um, and I was really intrigued so I thought I would uh, borrow it. Uh, this is another one that I've had on my wish list for a while. It's um, Wing Jones and this is by Catherine Webber. This is a YA novel and this says, um, with a grandmother from China and another from Ghana, 15 year old Wing Jones is often caught between worlds. When tragedy strikes she discovers an extraordinary talent she never knew she had. Wing's running could bring her family everything it needs. It could also keep Wing from the one thing that she truly wants. So that sounds like it's going to be quite diverse from sort of like a cultural point of view. I've never read a book about running before, so I think that would be quite interesting. And this is an absolutely beautiful book. It's got these sprayed sort of rainbow edges, which are really cool. So, um, yeah. I've got here um, Tiny Pretty Things, and this is by Sonia Chapman. Chara Potra and Danielle Clayton um, and I believe this is sort of a ballet, a YA ballet story um, about, um, is it just a girl or is it a group of girls who are ballerinas? It says it's set in, in one of Manhattan's most elite ballet schools. Um, wafer, thin, wafer thin ballerinas pull their hair into sleek buns and lace their point shoes high waiting for their chance to shine, but beneath the pretty polished surface, these girls are hiding some terrible secrets and telling some twisted lies. So, I don't really know a lot about ballet. The only, um, I watched Black Swan, I think it's called, that had Natalie Portman in it, and that was a really, really good film, really dark, obviously. And I, this is not, it's gonna be dark in the same way as Black Swan was, but I think it'd be really interesting to kind of dive into this sort of world, because um, I don't know a lot about ballet and that sort of thing. So, um, and I believe this is the start of a series. I think that it might be a trilogy. So we'll give that one a go. I was also, um, blown away by the amount of new releases that I saw when I was there as well. So I picked up a copy of Marie Lou's War Cross. I believe this came out towards the end of 2017 or like midway through 2017. It's quite a new release, definitely. And this is um, has been recommended if you like Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. And I absolutely loved that book a couple of years ago. I believe it kind of centers around a similar kind of concept of this kind of virtual reality sort of game that people play and there's this character who is asked to um, go and sort out some problems in the game and yeah that, that's basically all I know. Again this has got a really really lovely cover um, and I've, I've never read anything by Marie Lou before so um, I'm looking forward to checking that one out. Another um, new release that I found was A Skin Full of Shadows, and this is by Frances Hardinge. Um, I've got the Lightry on my TBR for March, 
um, and I'm really looking forward to picking that up and this is her newest release I don't really know anything about it at all I just saw it and kind of um, immediately picked it up and you can yeah so this says this is a story of a bare-hearted girl sometimes when a person dies their spirit goes looking for somewhere to hide some people have space within them perfect for hiding 12 year old Makepeace has learned to defend herself from the ghosts that try to possess her in the night desperate for refuge but one day a dreadful event causes her to drop her guard and now there's a spirit inside her the spirit is wild brutish and strong and it may be her only defense when she's sent to live with her father's rich and powerful ancestors there is talk of civil war and they need people like her to protect their dark and terrible family secret but as she plans her escape and heads out into a country torn apart by war make peace must decide which is worse possession or death that sounds really good doesn't it um sounds like it's going to be sort of maybe a little bit magical realism um but yeah i'm really intrigued by that premise i might have to read the lie tree first just because it's on my march tbr but i'm really interested in picking that one up definitely i was absolutely blown away to see this here as well and it is the cruel prince and this is by holly black this came out i believe in february so when i saw it on the shelves of the library i was absolutely flabbergasted um, this is a phase story i believe and that's basically all i know about it um, but it's had a, really, a lot of buzz um, from a lot of different people on booktube and in the sort of bookish world um, so yeah i'm really interested to pick it up it's by holly black i've never read anything by her before so yeah really excited about that I also have um, Far From The Tree and this is by Robin Benway. Um, this is one that um, Kayla from Books and Lala recommended. Is it Kayla or is it Lala? I think it's Kayla. Um, and I absolutely love her channel. I love getting recommendations from her. Um, and this is, I believe, a story about some sisters who were given up for adoption by their mum when they were babies or sort of very, very little. And then when they're adults, they come back together again. And it's sort of about how they tell their stories to each other or sort of their relationship and sort of working stuff out on that um, and she, Books and Lana had lovely things to say about it um, so yeah this was in one of the um, sort of express shelves sections kind of at the front so yeah I think this is going to be a really really good something a little bit different and that is Rebel of the Sands and this is by Alwyn Hamilton this is the start of a YA sort of fantasy trilogy I believe this one is a retelling of a thousand and one Arabian Nights um that's basically all I know about it it's set kind of in I want to say like in like an Egypt kind of setup like that sort of thing um that's basically all i know but sounds like a good time i also have here huntley fitzpatrick's my life next door i think this is like a romance type novel it's also ya as well um so it says in the back my summer my heart my life next door the garrets are everything the reads are not loud numerous messy affectionate and every day from her balcony perch 17 year old samantha reed wishes she was one of them until one balmy summer evening, Jace Garrett climbs the trellis to sit by her and changes everything. So yeah, like I said, I've had that on my wish list for a good few years. Um, and so when I saw it, I thought I would um, pick that one up and uh, give it a go. This next one is We Are The Ants and this is by Sean David Hutchinson. This is another one that Bix and Lala really, really likes. Um, and lots of other people on BookTube adore this book too. So this is, I believe, about is some is about somebody who is abducted by aliens, um, and that's all I know about it. But there are lots of people who've had, a, you know, loads of great things to say about this book. So I saw that and I grabbed it. This next one, um, Reagan from Proof Project um, read and said some good things about, and it is the Nest, and that is by Cynthia Dupreez Sweeney. I think that's how you pronounce that middle name and this is i believe about a family a, a rich family i believe and then i want to say like they lose all of their money or something like that yeah their much anticipated inheritance is suddenly wiped out 
and so they have to kind of learn to deal with this new sort of lifestyle i think that's kind of what it's about so um i love this cover as well it's such a pretty color and then it's got all of this gold kind of foiling on the thing again the glare is terrible um but yeah so there's that one. This one is the other Karis Bray book that I picked up and it is The Museum of You. Uh, this is her newest release I believe um, and this says on the inside cover Clover Quinn was a surprise. She used to imagine she was the good kind, now she's not so sure. She'd like to ask dad about it but growing up in the saddest chapter of someone else's story is difficult. She tries not to skate on the thin ice of his memories. Darren has done his best. He studied his daughter like a seismologist on the lookout for waves and surrounded her with everything she might want, everything he can think of at least to be happy. What Clover wants is answers. This summer she thinks she can find them in the second bedroom, which is still full of her mother's belongings. Volume isn't important. What she's looking for is essence, the undiluted bits, a collection of things that will tell the full story of her mother, her father and who she is going to be. But what you find depends on what you're searching for. So yeah, like I have, have had this one on my wish list as well. In fact, I added this one, I think after hearing Jen Cab will talk about it. And then I sort of had a look at her other books as well and added a couple of the other ones. So yeah. Um, and then lastly is a book uh, that is again quite a new release and I put on my February book wish list, I think I put it on that video, and it is um, Things a Bright Girl Can Do and this is by Sally Nichols. I put it on that wish list because I heard Simon over at Savage Reads um, haul this book and I thought the premise sounded really intriguing. Um, and this says, uh, 1914, the world stands on the edge of change but women still have no vote. Evelyn is 17 and though she's rich and clever, she may never be allowed to follow her older brother to university. Life is set out for her. Dances, tea parties and marriage. But Evelyn wants freedom and choice, even if it means paying the highest price alongside her fellow suffragettes. And then there's May, who campaigns tirelessly for women's votes and fair pay with other anti-violent suffrag suffragists. When she meets Nell, a girl who's grown up in hardship, she sees a kindred spirit. Together and in love, the two girls start to dream of a world where all kinds of women can find their place. But the fight for freedom will challenge Evelyn May and Nell more than they could ever imagine. As the Great War looms, just how much are they willing to sacrifice? It's a really timely book and I think one that's going to cover a lot of really relevant themes um, and really sort of interesting topics. And I'm so glad I saw it in the library and just had to borrow it. So there you go guys, they were all of the books that I borrowed from the library today. I had a really good time wandering around and I will definitely go, be going back to um, my, the bigger library, Colchester Library um, in town and sort of just even having a little wander around. There were people who were obviously using the computer systems because they've got like free Wi-Fi and stuff like that in there and there were people just sort of sitting in chairs and reading and there aren't any sort of like really comfy chairs i suppose it's not like being in some bookshops where they have like really comfy seats and stuff like that um i didn't wonder sometimes why libraries don't do that mm, i don't know but anyway um yeah like it's just kind of nice even just to have a wander around and kind of pick up different things they had a children's section which was downstairs um i didn't really have a look around there because um yeah i just i don't know I kind of felt like it wasn't really my place to be. There were a lot of kids down there and stuff like that. Um, but I probably will have a wander around it next time. But yeah, I had a really good time wandering around and picking stuff up. And like I said, I was really impressed by the selection that was there. And it was just exciting picking different things up that I'd had on my wish list for ages or kind of seen people talk about on booktube and yeah, and had the opportunity to read them basically. So I'd love to have a chat with you in the comments below. Have you read any of these and what did you think of them? And do you use your library? I've always had this dilemma about I've got all these books on my shelves and I should really be reading all of these, but isn't it just so nice to go and just be excited about new books? I don't know. I'd love to have a chat with you in the comments below. Like, What do you think about libraries? I really do want to support my local library. I do feel like um, over the last few years, a lot of libraries in the UK have closed um, due to kind of a lack of um, government funding and things like that. And I don't, they don't 
get a lot of government funding to begin with and that's perhaps why the selection of books isn't as great as it could be and I just I find that such a shame um, when I hear sort of American booktubers talking about all the wonderful things that they got out of their library the new releases and um, the audio books and things like that I'm just blown away by how much um, how good the selection is in the different places that they live but obviously we have a different way of, of doing things over here and the funding is is sounds like it's quite different as well so yeah do you use your local library or do you kind of feel like you shouldn't because of the books that you own um yeah i'd love to have a chat with you about that in the comments below thanks very much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye